Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. Fenway Park's always been a special place for us. Generations have come and gone. And for the first time since 1918, the Boston Red Sox are champions of baseball. We've been a Red Sox family from day one. He just loves the Red Sox more than anything else. Anything to do with baseball, I think, just takes him to an escape. Something that he can just forget about everything else that's going on because he understands the game of baseball. Here you go. Thomas was born six weeks premature, and once the shock of that kind of wore off, he went to CCMC and he had his neck evaluated, and they said, oh yeah, he has torticollis, but let's do an MRI just to be sure, and they came up with the fact that he had scoliosis. That whole piece of it, he's had 14 back surgeries for. Then right after his first birthday, he was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. He's the kind of person who knows what struggles are, but yet he's the kind of person who doesn't let it get him down. Please welcome eight-year-old Thomas Hastings. All right, Thomas, let's see a pitch. Make-A-Wish's reputation within the muscular dystrophy community is well known. We had some doctors at some point that said, you know, you might want to do this, so we felt this was the right time. We just sat down with Thomas and said, hey Thomas, this is your chance. Whatever you can think of, whatever you can imagine, you can ask for. The one thing that kept coming up for him was a baseball field. He just wanted a baseball field. And we had no idea that the Red Sox were involved. I was very moved when I heard about Thomas's wish and meeting him was just was such an inspiration and, and the whole family is and the love they have, not only for the Red Sox, but for each other and their spirit for life is just very powerful. You know? Next thing we knew, people in town just jumped on board. I made a couple phone calls, initially to the uh, mayor of Windsor and to the town manager. So that Tuesday, we got approval. Saturday morning, we started cutting trees down. That normally would have taken months, but cooperation from the town of Windsor was unbelievable. And from that day, 37 days it later. It didn't stop? No, nope, it, it didn't, didn't stop. Thomas's wish was to have a ball field in his backyard. And, and what turned this into Fantasy Fenway is the people, is yes. the teamwork. Yep. They just did more, way more than they were ever expected yep. to. And every day you'd come home and you'd say, I can't believe this, I can't believe this. I just come home one day and I'd be like, wow, the, the <laughs> monster's up. And I just come home and I'd like send pictures to my friends, like, look, look what's happening. It was really an amazing community effort. There was probably over a hundred or so volunteers that got involved. Most of these people had never met Thomas. They just knew that they were coming together to help a Make-A-Wish kid get this amazing thing. For that month and continuing on, we see the greatness and the goodness in people. That is what we hear over and over is the power of the wish. And that really was, it was amazing. When you walk into Thomas's Fantasy Fenway, you've walked into Fenway Park, period. Anything you could think of that is iconic for Fenway Park, it's here. The engineer took an absolute 25% scale of Fenway and he got it directly from the, the, the grounds crew at Fenway Park. And, and Thomas, being the huge Red Sox fan he is, understands it and appreciates it, and, and it really is to him. When he gets out on that field, and whether he's playing with his friends or he's out there completely on his own, he is in Fenway Park. In this park, it's, it's completely accessible for him. And he designed it that way, and that was laid out from the beginning. The field's completely flat. There's ramps up to the Green Monster. There's not a single thing here that he can't do. He really put a lot of thought into that and said, you know, this is gonna get me through the things that are tough because I can go out there and I can just be me and to play with his friends, which is super important. I thought it was good and I thought I did a 
good job and when I was pitching and when I was hitting. I thought that my inside the park home runs were cool. And so, and a lot of people were here. So it kind of felt like a major league baseball game. It was very fun. I think it's important that, you know, the kids who are going through those hard times continue to get to have special attention. But it's nice that the, also the entire family can have an experience where you kind of forget about things for a while. A project like this gives you the opportunity to put aside life and focus on this good. It, it was all about Thomas and it was all about the town wanting to do this project. It, it was a tremendous event. Here he comes out of the bullpen now to relieve Thomas Paul Hastings. His disease is progressive. He's doing less and less. He gets so trapped in this world of, of, of dark days, of tough days. But this was an experience where we saw people that were just giving of themselves. Make-A-Wish brought that together. And it, it was a gift for Thomas, but it also helped us as an entire family to remember that there are amazing people out there, caring people out there, all over the place. And you know, that's incredible you know, how it's helped all of us to to, to kind of get past those dark days, because there's a lot of bright days ahead. And, and, and a lot of it's because this wish was granted to Thomas. I can just wake up to it. I don't have to, I don't have to think, is, is that supposed to be Fenway Park? I know it's Fenway Park.